Hello, and welcome to QuantPy. Now, we are going to explain the approaches that are commonly used for the calibration of the Varsicek distribution. We will be ignoring the LGD parameter for simplicity. So we are primarily interested in determining the two parameters, the average PD and the correlation using a variety of data sources. Just for context, you might have encountered the techniques that are used for the calibration of the individual credits. These techniques aim to calibrate the PD of an individual using for example, accounting based information such as distance to default or the spreads of the company's debt instruments. Or the rating systems that assign names to rating classes. We are instead interested in the calibration of the loss distribution of a homogeneous pool and not the calibration of an individual name. So the techniques we are going to discuss will reflect the pool perspective. The calibration techniques are mainly driven by what type of data is available. For example, we might have access to historical default rates of a pool. We can then calibrate the loss distribution using quite a few methods. For example, we can view the historical default rates as realizations of the conditional PDs whose known distributional properties can guide us to calibrate the parameters of the distribution. Or we might use the method of moments matching or maximum likelihood to infer the parameters. We will illustrate these three methods using observed default rates that we have sourced from standard and pause. Alternatively, one might have access to a point in time, distribution of losses or just quantiles of a calibrated model to infer the parameters. This approach might be available to some participants, for example, the regulators. Or one might use the market prices of credit products such as credit default swaps on pool of names and the CDO, to infer the PD, and the correlation. By analogy with the option pricing, this approach will give risk-neutral parameters which are, usually, higher than the real-world parameters. So let's start with, the default rates. We will use the global corporate's default rates that we have extracted from the Standard & Poor's report. You can find the report on their website, or you can just type it in the search engine. The mean and standard deviation of the default rates are as follows. As you might recall, we frequently encountered the inverse normal of the PD, and we will be needing it down the road, so let's also calculate the inverse normal of the default rates and plot it here. The mean and standard deviation of this series are as follows. Now, we are going to use this data to calibrate the PD and the correlation parameters. Recall that the conditional PD under the Varsicek assumptions is as follows. Applying inverse normal to both sides, we get. Splitting the fraction, we get. Now, since S is standard normal, this expression is just a linear transformation of the standard normal. So it is a normal random variable with some mean and variance which we can easily calculate. These can be easily verified by noting that the mean of S is 0 and the variance of S is 1. So we can use the mean and variance of the inverse normal of the default rates that we have already calculated and then solve the two equations for the PD and the correlation. Let's first invert the variance formula to get the correlation. Multiplying both sides by the denominator of the fraction on the right hand side, we get rearranging and factoring row, we get isolating row on one side, we get correlation in terms of the variance. Now, let's solve the second expression for the PD. Multiplying both sides by the denominator of the fraction on the right hand side, we get applying normal to both sides, we get PD in terms of the parameters we already know. Now, let's plug in the values in the two formulae. Plugging in the standard deviation in the first formula, we get the correlation. And plugging the mean and the correlation into the second formula, we get the PD. And, we have calibrated the Varsicek distribution. Now, let's illustrate the second method. As the name suggests, this method involves equating the moments of the realized default rates and the theoretical moments of the conditional PDs. We have already seen before that the expected value of the conditional PD or its first moment 
is the unconditional PD. Whilst not required, one can write this formula as the normal of the inverse normal. This form is helpful to remember the general formula for the higher order moments of the conditional PDs. For example, the formula for the second moment is as follows. Where N2 represents the bivariate normal. You may view this as the joint default probability of two names. Now, we can easily derive the variance formula. By the definition of variance, we have substituting for the moments, we get shifting the mean and the variance of the conditional PDs to the left hand side, we get. And now for moments matching, we just substitute the mean and variance of the observed default rates to get. So, we have only one unknown parameter, which is not hard to calculate. To help visualize the calculation, we plot the bivariate normal probability for the given values as a function of rho. The zoomed in version of which, focusing on the lower part, is as follows. And we can easily look up the value of the rho that would produce the required probability. Now, we move to the maximum likelihood method. The results will come out to be the same as the first approach, though the mathematics is long. We will need the probability density function, which we reproduce here. If we have a sample of t data points, which we assume to be independent, then the probability of observing the sample is just the product of the individual probabilities, which we can write using the product notation as follows. Taking log of both sides, we get the log likelihood function, which one maximizes with respect to the parameters to get the maximum likelihood estimates. Notice the log of the product of the terms is just the sum of their individual logs. Now, we will need to plug the density function into this formula, but before we do so, let's recall the probability density function of the normal. Taking log of both sides, we get the log and the exponential are inverse of each other, so they cancel. Now, our density function has normal density in both the numerator and the denominator, so the constant terms containing the pi will cancel each other, and we are left with a simpler expression. And recall that the log likelihood is the sum of t such terms, so we get. We now need to maximize this with respect to the PD and the correlation. We will start with the PD. Differentiating both sides, we get. The second and third terms have disappeared because they do not contain PD. We know the derivative of the inverse normal from the probability density function video, so we get. Taking the constant terms out of the summation, we get. Setting the derivative equal to zero, we get. Applying the summation to both terms, and taking the constant out of the summation, we get. Notice, summing a constant, t times, is equal to t times the constant, so that explains the first term. And rearranging, we get. The right hand side, is just the mean of the inverse of the, conditional default rates, so the formula is exactly what we saw before. Similarly, we can calculate the derivative, with respect to the second parameter, rho. As the calculation of the derivative is straightforward, we do not give the detailed steps, but if you set the derivative, equal to zero, you will get an expression like this, after some manipulation. And it is easy to check that, this is equivalent to the variance formula. So we get the variance, on the right hand side. Again, we have seen this formula before, so we are not going to repeat the calculations of the parameters. Now, let's assume that we have the loss distribution, at a given point, and we want to calibrate the parameters. We can certainly fit the distribution to the given data, using one of the established distribution fitting methods. But we need very little to calibrate the parameters, to the simulated distribution. Assume we have been given, just two quantiles of the loss distribution. Can we determine, what values of the parameters, were used to generate the distribution? Let's see. First, recall the quantile formula. 
Notice we have set the LGD equal to 1 for simplicity. You can include the LGD if you like. Taking inverse normal of both sides, we get multiplying both sides by the denominator of the fraction on the right hand side, we get. Now, let's represent the other quantile by beta. So we can write similar expression for the beta quantile. Subtracting the second equation from the first, we get. And shifting the terms containing the row to the left hand side, we get. Now, we know all the values on the right hand side, so let's call the resulting value C. And we have seen similar expression before. We can easily solve it for row to get. To explain this approach with an example, let's assume that the distribution has been generated using the previously estimated values of the two parameters. The quantiles and their inverse can be easily calculated by plugging these parameters into the quantile formulae. Now, let's assume we do not know the correlation and the PD and we have been given these quantile values. Let's see if we can determine the parameters. We need to calculate the C first. We will need the inverse normal of alpha and beta, which is easy to calculate. Plugging in the inverse of the loss quantiles and the normal quantiles into the expression for C, we get. And now we can plug the C into the row formula to get the correlation parameter. And once we know that, then it is easy to calculate the PD by plugging the correlation and the given quantile into either of the quantile formulae. And finally, one can use the market prices of credit products to calibrate the distribution. For example, it is a standard practice in the pricing of credit default swaps to calibrate the probabilities using market prices of CDS. As we are interested in the pool, one can use the CDS prices of pools such as North American CDX and iTrax to infer the PD. And one can then calibrate the correlation using the prices of credit options, the so-called CDOs. This is similar to using the black scales formula to calculate the implied volatility. The pricing function here is different, the so-called LHP model, which essentially uses the Varsicek model to price the CDO. You can find the full derivation of the formula on the QuantPi website. And once you have the formula, you can use the known inputs such as the PD estimated before and discount rates in addition to the CDO price to infer the correlation. We hope you enjoyed the video and we look forward to seeing you in the next.